So the, the main research aim for our jellyfish this year is to increase our genetic diversity of our polyp stock. So the polyp is the very early stage of um, the jellyfish life cycle. It's a bit like a flower attached to a, a coral, uh, uh, attached to a rock, sorry. And they're very, very small, about this sort of size. Um, and they can live for many, many years. Um, when you get an environmental change, generally going from winter, coming into spring, as the sea temperature starts warming, that causes the polyp to go into what's called a strobula. Um, and the, the polyp starts changing its structure and producing lots of little discs, which are called a fiery, which is the very, very small stage of the jellyfish life cycle. So these, uh, these discs bud off one at a time. If you imagine a whole series of dinner plates all stacked up on top. The top one drops off. That then grows in size and becomes what you know as an adult jellyfish. So as the top one buds off, the next one underneath grows a little bit more, buds off, and it just keeps going like this. And that's what's called strobulation, and that happens on the actual polyp. The problem that we have um, here is that the polyps that we have um, have gone through a, a population or a genetic bottleneck. So we've got a very, very small genetic diversity. And the problem with that is polyps can become unpredictable in their strobulation and therefore unpredictable in producing jellyfish that we can then display. So what we're looking at doing is increasing that genetic diversity by collecting wild animals. Um, so we've been going out every month, collecting at different life stages. And what we've got here in the pot, um, we went out a few days ago and collected this female jellyfish. And so on the tentacles, those yellow uh, splodges all over there are full with what's called larvae. Um, these larvae will be released from the jellyfish. They're free swimming, they'll swim around and find a new rock to attach to. They'll then change and become the polyp, um, which then will release more jellyfish the following, uh, following year. So that's the life cycle of the jellyfish. And we know then, because these have been wild collected, that they're going to be genetically diverse. Each individual can produce hundreds of thousands of, of, of planular larvae, they're called. And so this, this female has been isolated in this beaker for a couple of hours, floating in the tank to make sure it's kept nice and cool. And what we're seeing is probably too small to pick up on the camera. The tiny, tiny little dots in there that are free swimming in the water are actually the planular larvae, which will then settle, form the polyp, and then we'll be able to culture from those, those polyps. But the, the polyp is the absolute key stage in jellyfish culturing because you can keep it for 10, 20 years um, and continue strobulating. You actually artificially change the water temperature. So these wa the water temperature here is very cold, about 11 degrees. Um, we keep our polyps probably about 9 degrees. And then when we want them to produce jellyfish, we can turn the chiller off for a few hours the water temperature will rise and that will simulate going from winter to spring very, very quickly as the polyp thinks, oh, I've got to quickly produce jellyfish so they've got enough time to grow for the summer. They can then sexually reproduce and then close the life cycle. Fantastic. And this one you, you collected quite recently? This one collected five last Friday. So what are we? We're Friday now. So um, seven days ago. So when I collected her, she didn't have any planula. The tentacles looked completely clear. So that's happened in the last seven days.